All right, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us here, whether you're here live or you're watching online, or whether you're watching from one of our Rockfish Church gatherings in the States or one of the other countries from around the world. Thank you so much for being here and gathering with us today. We are on, and this is amazing, we are on the final and ninth installment of a sermon series entitled Equipping Point. So over the course of the last eight weeks, we've discussed some things. Number in the first few weeks, we discussed the idea of the personal habits that were necessary for us to, to continue to mature in Christ. In other words, what are the habits that we need individually to implement in our lives that will guarantee or fortify us against becoming complacent um, and, and not growing? You know, I, I tell people all the time, when, we, when we're talking about a church and we're talking about a person's individual life, whether it's individual or corporate, if it's healthy, it will grow. And we should be growing in our relationship with God from day one. It should be something that is continual and perpetual, not something that wanes over time, but something that grows more and more red hot. If you miss that, go back, implement these habits, and you will see change and tra transformation. In the second aspect of the series, or the second few weeks, we talked about the idea of discovering our giftings and our callings and our abilities, and not only discovering them, but committing to engaging them in a way to bring value to the local body, to serve other believers, to serve God, to serve Jesus, and also to serve unbelievers. Incredibly important. Now, we ask that you would walk through the discovery process, and then you would, wouldn't stop there, but you would commit to engaging in some aspect of ministry. Now, last week and the week before, we talked about the idea of the necessity of engaging in the corporate and individual call of discipleship making. We talked about how to effectively utilize our story. Every single person in here has a story. And your story is not only valuable in reminding you about the good things that God has done, where he's taken you from and where he's taken you to, but it's also a mechanism of encouragement to help bring others to Christ. And it's very simple. Where I was, when God showed up, and where I am. Because you know, when you come to Christ, when you experience Christ, you will experience life change. I'm not saying that your circumstances are going to drastically change, but you should, if you had an authentic experience of Christ, begin to experience change. Then we talked last week, and we're going to pick up right here. We talked last week about the necessity of understanding the gospel of Jesus Christ, listen to this, which is the primary mechanism to infuse hope into not only us, but into the totality of the world. The gospel is so valuable. We talked about three aspects. We said we will effectively make disciples, which if you call yourself a disciple, you are called to make disciples. We didn't make that up. That's God's call for every single one of us. We will effectively make disciples when we know the gospel, when we share the gospel, and most importantly, I believe this, when we live the gospel. This is Dan DeBruller. He is our director of discipleship here. Dan, what does living the gospel look like? Living the gospel is when we begin to really embody all the things. When, when we become disciple makers, I mean, the gospel itself is our path to salvation. It's when we come to know Christ in our lives. And like Tony mentioned, you know, we all have a story. And the story is as simple as where I was, what happened, where I am now. And God is right there in the middle of that story. It's when we begin to live that gospel and it becomes so real to us because it's true that we can't help but share it, that it becomes part of our everyday life. It becomes part of our everyday habit where we, we wake and we live and we breathe for God. Living the gospel is when Jesus said, be salt and be light. That's why we say living out the gospel. Just by doing that in obedience and conformity to the word and the will of God, you become salt and light in your everyday life. Now, there's two very important questions that we need to ask ourselves. This is for you. This is for me. Number one, where do I need improvement in these areas? If I'm very transparent, I need improvement. I try to get better all the time at understanding the vastness of, of what God has done for us as explained in the gospel. And sharing the gospel, you know, I, 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 I speak before people very often, so when it comes to sharing the gospel, I feel like I'm pretty, pretty fluent in that, but when it comes to individuals, sometimes it, it can be a little bit more difficult. So in the area of knowing the gospel, in the area of sharing the gospel or living the gospel, where do you need improvement, number one? And number two, this is more important or just as important, 
How will you seek? How will we seek to improve these areas? In other words, if, if you don't have, if you have a goal, but you don't have a plan, you don't really have a goal. You know what you have? You have a dream. And we need goals to reach and to be more intentional concerning these things. Now, releasing point is what we're talking about today. We've been talking about equipping point. Again, this is the culmination of this. And I want to go back to the reason that we exist. This is the mission statement of Rockfish Church, which has been the catalyst for everything that we've discussed. We believe that we exist to make, to equip, and to release fully committed followers of Jesus. We believe here that everything you learn, everything that we teach... Learning is for living. If you're just learning and you're not living, there's a massive disconnect. What hangs in the balance of that disconnect? Lost people, lost souls, the advancement of the kingdom, the demise of our culture. There's a lot in that gap. So we believe that learning is for living, not just personal edification and personal growth, but living out the mission and the call of God. So we exist to make, equip, and release. Now, anytime you're going to have a mission statement like this, you need what we refer to as metrics of measurement. Okay, so we say that this is what we want to do. Well, how do we measure if we're doing this successfully? Very important. The first part, three metrics. And I was talking to a group of pastors the other day, and we were talking about measuring the things that are incredibly important to us. So we measure connectivity. So we want people to do three things. We want people to, to connect with Christ. We want people to grow or mature in Christ, be equipped. And we want people to engage in the mission. So those are the three metrics. So how do we measure connectivity? We measure connectivity through baptisms. You know, people go, well, Pastor Tony, why don't you have altar calls? We do. Every Sunday, you just saw one. Mm -hmm. You just saw somebody dedicate publicly their life to Christ through baptism, which is the first act of obedience for the believer that, that he asks us to do. He says, go on to all the world, make disciples, baptizing them. Really profound reasons for that. So we do measure that connectivity through literally the life change is expressed through baptisms. I think we've had close to 150 so far this year. It's is so, that incredible? Yeah. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> also through growth. Listen, I'm not talking about church growth. Again, I was talking with the same group of pastors. If it is healthy, it will grow. But I'm talking about the metric of growth in you. Are you growing spiritually? So I have people very often come and say, well, Pastor Tony, I really enjoy the message today. And I say, that, that's good. But let me ask you a question. Are you growing? Do you feel like as you attend Rockfish and you come here, do you feel like you're being equipped to do the work of the ministry more effectively? If the answer, if you want to you show a pastor appreciation, you say, I'm getting it. And I am growing. The third aspect of, of this is engagement, not attendance. And we can measure attendance, and that's great and wonderful. But you can have a lot of people coming, but not a lot of people engaging, and, and you're not doing a whole lot. So that third me uh, metric is engagement. So connectivity, connecting, growing, and engaging in the missional call of Jesus Christ. Now, what we're going to be talking about today is very functional in nature. And you may go, well, Pastor Tony, it's not very spiritual. You're right. But it is very, very practical and very, very applicable, just like everything else God told us to do. So we're going to dive into some of this stuff right now. So when we talk about the idea of committing to outreach, and, and some of you just turn me off because you go, you know what? I'm not an evangelist. Outreach is not my thing. Listen, listen. If you are a disciple, if you say Jesus is my Lord, you've been given the mandate and the, and the instructions to multiply through the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you are a disciple and you are not making disciples intentionally, you are failing at being the disciple that God called you to be. I'm not saying that to make you angry. I'm just telling you what the word said. He said to his disciples, go and make disciples. My job, part of our job here is to help you do that effectively, to put the ability to do so in a very understandable, applicable way. I call it putting the cookies on the low shelf. I said this, until the Great Commission becomes a corporate conviction, it will remain unfulfilled. The statement up here says this, make the great conviction a personal conviction. Until it becomes a personal conviction for you and for me, it will never become a corporate conviction. So as we talk about some of these things today, please don't put this in the abstract other. Please ask and put yourself and imagine yourself in these opportunities and scenarios on how you can implement them into your life and make it, make, 
and make it real. And you say, well, I'm not a member of Rockfish Church. I don't care. This will work anywhere. We're talking about advancing the kingdom and doing what we're called to do as Christians, not as members, members of any particular church. Many of you may be visiting from other places today. This is very important. This is, these are Christian principles. So, Dan, talk to us about some of the necessities of developing a personal engagement plan and some keys. Well, first let me just say the whole thought of equipping point is so vital. It's so essential. And hopefully every church that is meeting this morning, every church that will meet today is a church that is equipping the people who are there in front of them. Amen. Because what's our first charge? As Jesus was departing the earth, we, we call it the Great Commission, but we're talking about Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded. This is what we're here to do. This is what we're here to do week after week. This is what you, as a disciple of Jesus Christ, are to do in your life. So as we talk about equipping and developing habits and, and learning the things about ourselves, about what God has planted in us, the whole thing is so circular because it's what we're all called to do. It's what Jesus called all disciples to do, which was to go and make more disciples. So your every day going about your business life is about Christ. If you have Christ living within you, you are to share that gospel. You are to live the gospel. You are to share the gospel. But first, you've got to know the gospel, and you've got to make room in your life mm. for the habits of a disciple. And so this is the first thing you really have to consider. What does it mean on my schedule? What is, has to change in my life for me to make room and to make time to be what it was I was called to be in the first place, which is a disciple maker? So we may have to change some of the habits that we have now. We may have to uh, push some things to the side that we do routinely to make room for the gospel that we are to be living and sharing in our lives. Let me say this. Some of the most destructive things, some of the most limiting things in your life are good things. Mm -hmm. D did you hear that? See, we as Christians would agree, hey, the bad things we need to eliminate. The problem is not the bad things, but it's the good things that keep us from experiencing the great things because we find fulfillment and complacency in the lesser. And we often settle for a, 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 a relevant right now lesser in the, instead of seeking the greater later, so to speak. So anytime we're talking about making margin and deleting things and, and putting things in and creating that space, it means that we have to go back and examine our priorities. Very often when you look at your calendar, when you look at your activities, your activities are prioritized based upon your values. To reevaluate those priorities means to go back and see, is my life prioritized or ordered according to God's priorities? I'll give you an example. If I said, okay, what's your number one priority? We'd all go, God, what's second? My family, what's third? My, whatever that looks like for you. So here's my question. Is your calendar consistent with that? Otherwise, there's something leading other than, there's something other than your spoken priorities. It's called your, your true values. Your values will determine your behavior and also will determine the culture of your life. So the third aspect is, is that you make a commitment. Then what does that look like as we examine our priorities? How is it key and why is it key to make an overt commitment? Well, even what we put on here is to put it on our calendar. We know that if, if it's important to us, we will make time. We will make room for it. We will put it on our calendar. Maybe you're like me and 18 times a day you have an alarm or a, a notification that comes in on your phone or on your computer, wherever you're at, that reminds you, you made a commitment to this thing. You have this thing. It's coming up in 10 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever. And when we begin to do this with what we're called to be as disciple makers, when we begin to make that a priority, when we begin to put that on our calendar, man, we will become more effective because we honor that commitment and we're reminded of the commitment that we made in the first place. Yeah. You know, um, I have a alarm on my phone that, that goes off every, every day 
at a certain time to remind me to do something. I, I believe that God wants to send revival to America, but I believe that the revival begins here at church. I have an alarm that goes off that reminds me to pray that God would pour out his spirit in powerful ways, not, not in kooky stuff, but in, in a real expression of his desire to be with and among his people. That is my prayer, that God would dwell among us and love us as a father loves his children. I have that reminder. Now, Dan, I hate to put you out in front of everybody, but you <laughs> shared with me that you have an alarm on your calendar. Uh, you talk about that evening alarm? Yes. Oh, yeah. man. Will you share that? It, will, will she get mad if you share this? My wife and I were married in July, the seventh month, 44 years ago. Every evening, every evening at 744, there's an alarm that goes off to remind us to do a five-minute slow dance, to commit five minutes to one another. Oh, and, oh, you oh, lady. Oh, cute. shut up. And if, <laughs> and if we do it right, the dog even gets involved. But, you know, it's, it's these things, you know, we, we, we honor one another. We honor our commitment to one another. And this f- little five-minute reminder at one of the weirdest times of the day is just a reminder that we, we made that choice. We made that commitment. And these are the same kind of things. And here's the thing. I don't have to wait for that alarm to go off anymore. And as these things that we're going to talk about today become the habits in your life, become the things that you want to do, the commitments that you want to honor, you won't need the alarm anymore either. It'll just become part of who you are. Mm -hmm. Just like we discussed so many weeks ago about making the habits of becoming an effective and growing disciple part of your everyday life. They will become easier and you need fewer and fewer alarms because you'll be doing them because you love them. If you will make what we're about to talk about personal, It will become powerful in your life, not just for you, but for those who are around you. Now, guys, when your wife puts the uh, tightens the screws on you to put an alarm to dance with her for five minutes, you can thank Dan. All right, Dan, (laughs) I love you, man, um, and hate you at the same time. Anyway, so 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 let's look at at the personal reach opportunities. We see it as our responsibility to make, equip, and release. One aspect of equip of equipping is doing everything we can to put the necessary tools in your hand to do what God has called you to do. I understand that everybody here is not an evangelist. Not everybody here is a teacher. You weren't called to be, okay? It's okay to be who you are, but you must contribute to the call to reach the world. So we've done some things and are doing some things. We've got something called an invitation station. It sits in the foyer and it reminds you, you walk by it, you see it, you ignore it. It's just a piece of furniture, (laughs) but there's little cards on it. Dan, what's on this invitation station? This one simply says, sit with me in church this weekend. I mean, how easy is that? I mean, what a way out of a conversation. If If you found yourself in a hole with the conversation, maybe got asked a difficult question, to simply invite someone to sit with you in church this weekend. And just leave it at that. Now, on the back of each one of these cards is a QR code, and they can scan, they can get all the service times, get all the information they'd ever need. And we get one more metric, and we don't do it for the metric, but we do like to know that that people are utilizing these. But being able to simply invite somebody by handing them a card and just leaving it in their hands. It's so small. It fits in a shirt pocket. It fits in a back pocket. It could fit in your wallet, guys. Mm-hmm. Just to be able to hand one of these to somebody and give them the opportunity to see that you are willing to make good on your promise. Well, you're just trying to get people to invite people to rockfish and grow the church. And, and listen, listen. Invite them to any church you want. Even better, invite them to Christ by sharing them the gospel Mm -hmm. right there on the spot. That's what we'd rather happen. That's what we'd rather you do. But this is a non-confrontational mechanism. See what it says. 82% of unchurched people would attend if they were simply invited. Now think about that. If that's true, that means you're going to have an 82% completion rate. Why wouldn't we ask? Why wouldn't we just take one of these cards, stick it in our wallet, and pull it out at the end or the beginning of a conversation say, where you go to church? If you don't go anywhere, I'd love to invite you. You can write your number on the back and connect with them. Uh, and if you bring somebody, I'd love to meet them. I'd love to talk to them. That's why we do three services is so that we, we do have time. To, to interact and to be there. We're trying to avoid having some hierarchical system where the pastors and the teachers and those guys are big muckety mucks. We're not. We're not. We're your fellow servants of Jesus Christ. And it's important that we do that. One interesting statistic, 80 to 90% of the people, we have something called starting point where people come to learn about rockfish before that, before they become members to decide if this is where they want to be. 80 to 90% of the people 
who come to starting point say they walk through the doors the first time because someone invited them. Think about that. If I were to say right now, raise your hand if you're here because somebody invited you, that means that probably 80% of the people in this building right now would raise their hand because somebody personally invited them, and your mind's probably going there right now. Dan, what's another very, uh, very personal opportunity for growth and connectivity? Well, it's small. Before we, before we go there, there I, I just want to say, you know, I don't know whether he gave him a card or not, but while we were in here talking about this uh, in another service, I got a text message on my phone from somebody that said, hey, please pray with me for my friend so-and-so. He just texted me and asked me for prayer for his brother, and he laid out the situation. You know, if you are the person who puts a card in someone's hand, and you're wondering, who do I know that needs the gospel? Who do I know that isn't living it, that it hasn't gone deep enough? And you put a card like this in their hand they at least know where you stand. They at least know that you are connected to the gospel and that it's important to you. And you can be the guy that gets that call, the person who gets that uh, email or that text message because people will know that you know. And that opens this whole other door for people to walk through in the relationship. But another way to open that door is to consider opening your home as well. Mm -hmm. You know, through small groups, through Bible studies. We have a Bible study that is out of Rockfish Church that actually meets at lunchtime on Fort Liberty. They just simply get together and they open the Word and they meet at different places on different days, but they do this because that's where they're at. And when you open your home, you have the opportunity to invite your neighbors, to invite your friends, to invite anyone that you want. It gives you an opportunity to remember to clean the house one more time this week before people show up. And maybe you'll even get a decent meal that night. But to to take the opportunity to open your life. It's not just about opening your home because you could meet wherever. You could meet at Tony's Starbucks. You could meet at all the different places that people go. But you have this opportunity to open your life and begin to grow together, begin to grow community around the Word of God. And as a matter of fact, we even have some opportunities available to you. If you didn't know, anyone who's a member of Rockfish Church has access to Right Now Media. Now, Right Now Media is a, is a plethora of Bible studies, video-based, many of them that even come with uh, downloadable, printable study guides that you can get together, you could get together around a topic. Maybe you have some friends in your life and you you lean into this one thing. Well, you could take that one thing and you could begin to meet around that topic, around that subject, or you could see some friends in your life, some people in your life who have a need in a specific area and invite them to study it. It is so simple. If you haven't ever looked at Right Now Media, these, many of them are uh, five, six, seven minute videos that you can watch that really open things up and will help you start the conversation as you come together in a very comfortable, very friendly surrounding. So small group Bible studies, great way to begin meeting with people and to begin growing as Christians and to begin growing Christian community. As a matter of fact, we just Last night was the very last Cafe Rock that we have for the foreseeable future. So if you have been a Saturday night attendee, it just opened up. So you have an opportunity even on Saturday to begin looking at the opportunity that you have in your circle of influence. And this was one of the, one of the catalysts for stopping that was to give more opportunities for people to open up their home. Now, I know Dan just gave you a great reason, cleaning the house, not to host a small group, okay? That, that's me. And, and that can be daunting, but like you said, I, I walked into a coffee shop and there was a whole group of people sitting there. We have umbrellas outside that can, you know, that you can literally just meet under the umbrellas. It can be so, it can be so non-formal. Here's the part that I like. You don't have to be a mental health expert to help somebody with their mental health issues from a Christian perspective. You don't have to be a marriage counselor. You don't have to have a degree in that or this. We have these resources that you can walk through their problem with these resources and you can just point them to Jesus in the capacity that you have. Think about that as a tool. We're not asking you to become all this stuff. We're just saying, open up your life to help bring hope and help into somebody else's life. And this is an incredible way to do it. Now, we're going to be talking about this one. Um, It's called My Reach. Now, this is personal opportunities. Now, this is important. We want to put this on the lower shelf, uh, low shelf, and make this applicable to every one of you. So we're going to look at this. It's called 
uh, my reach. Now, we asked you to do, um, what was it called, 2K30? Uh, yeah, reach 2K30. Reach 2K30. We said we want to reach 2,000 people for Christ in 30 days. And here's a snapshot of kind of what happened. 2,350 people were reached around that number over the course of that 30 days. That was to test and take the temperature of the outreach health of this whole organization. And do I believe that we could have reached a lot more? Yeah, some reached very hard. But if we all reach intentionally, this number can look very different. What we want to do is we, don't want impl we, don't, we didn't want it to be 2K30 or 2K25,000. We wanted it to be, or, or we wanted it to be continual and perpetual. We wanted this to become a part of the culture of rockfish. So we made this tool and we incorporated things in it like praying with somebody. Look at, look at the number one thing there. People prayed with somebody, not for somebody. When you pray with somebody, you're getting into that boat of their adversity. You're getting into that storm with them, and you're inviting God on their behalf to come in and make a difference. Invite someone to a service or to an event. These are very low-level and higher-level ways to invite people to, you know, to, to reach, if you would, for Christ. How about this one? Participate in a reach event. And we're going to look at what these are. Sharing the gospel with somebody. The second uh, second or third most, and I think this might have been before the end of it all, but the gospel presentation, you guys shared the gospel. Ultimately, that's what we want. If we can connect people with Christ, I don't care what church they go to. I care about their souls. I want you to care about their souls. Meet them where they are. Um, how about this one? Hosting a prayer point. We'll talk about what that is. Create a gospel-centered social media post. Share in a service or share a service event on social media. And, and how about this one? Place a rockfish church decal. You say, well, Pastor Tony, you're just trying to get people to church. Invite them to your church. I don't care. But people need some contact point when they need help and need hope. Plus, this will make you a better driver. Amen. <laughs> Fear the fish. Okay? So just imagine... I had been sitting in, in line and I saw this sticker on the back of somebody's car and thought they're a terrible driver. No, that's not what I thought. I thought when I start looking for a church, you know, that can happen. Guys, these are free. They're at the Welcome Center. Pick up one, please, please. And if you go to another church, find out if they have a resource. If they don't, you can stick one. Rockfish Church. Anyway, uh, another one is a yard sign. What do you think, Vanna? Dan, Vanna. Why She's retiring. I got the gig. Yeah. So <laughs> these are yard signs. We have these. I got to tell you what happened. And you say, well, well this, is, this is not spiritual. No, but it's intentional. So I had a, a, a testimony after testimony. I've driven some strange places and see these signs. So God bless you mm -hmm. for putting them out there. But we had somebody who had this sign in their yard, in their neighborhood for over a year. And after a year, somebody, one of their neighbors showed up at church and they said, we came because mm -hmm. we encountered something. We needed help and hope. And there, like a beacon of light, like a beacon of hope in your front yard was an invitation to come to Rockfish. And we came. Guys, it's not rockfish that's special. It's the gospel that transforms people's lives. It's the hope. It's putting people's hand in the hand of the man who walked on the water. That's an old Elvis song reference, in case you don't know what that is. Anyway, so, so we've got these yard signs. And they're $29.95 a piece. No! They're free. Do you understand? They're free. We want to give you everything. And, and why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? And again, if you're not comfortable with that, do something. Any of these things, some of these things you can do. In fact, let me show you how simple it is to engage. I remember saying, I'm going to do one of these things every day for the next 30 days. And it was transformational. Just going through and picking one. Some I did more. Some I'm more comfortable at doing. I could only put one sign. Of course, I must admit, during the election, it was during the election, I stuck Rockfish Church signs by all the elect, elected <laughs> official things. We got another election coming up, so I might do it again. Anyway, don't do that. Please don't place them somewhere illegal. All right. Um, so we got a video that'll show you just how easy it is to make this personal. All right. Is that thing ready? All right. Let's see. Here we go. My Reach How To Guide. Step one How to install the app. First, unlock your phone, then visit the App Store. Once there, search Rockfish Church or scan the QR code with your phone's camera. When you scan the QR code, you'll be taken to a website with multiple options. Select the appropriate one for your device. When you see the app, click the install button. 
When your installation is complete, go ahead and open it. How to submit a reach. Once you open the app, you should see My Reach. Tap on it. On this page, you will scroll through the list of ways to reach. Select the ways you reached, then click Submit. Here you can also view the results of your reach and others. Thank you for engaging with My Reach. Let me back up really briefly to that, to that one on there, that social media post. You know, you, you post on social media most likely. Uh, you we do. See, some I've seen crazy some. stuff. But, you know, we, we live in this world that has got so many problems. There are people who are broken in so many different ways, people who are searching for truth. They're searching for answers. And if you uh, get, just get good at Google, what is a great hashtag for today? And you begin to put those things in your social media posts. I mean, think about it. Anxiety, worry, stress, child uh, rearing, parenting, all of those things. When you begin to answer those questions, even in the text that you're using, People will find these, even people who don't know you already will find them. And you can, you can do this. You know, Tony uses a lot of uh, YouTube and uses some great answers. And you can do things that are so simple. Man, if you're here and you're being equipped week after week, or even if this is your first time, but you're walking with Christ, man, you have so many answers that people are looking for. And when you compile that into simple posts for other people to find the help and the hope that they need, man, we're doing a good thing. You, you know, I, and what he's saying is so true. And I don't think we realize how much the world wants the simple answers that we hear every day. I went on the TikTok. Are y'all familiar with the TikTok? Yeah, my daughter told me don't call it the TikTok. It shows that I'm old. Anyway, so I went on the TikTok and I posted an excerpt from, from a marriage conference that we did that was just very biblical in nature and just very true. And um, 600,000 views later, guys, people are looking for hope and help in an unprecedented way. I mean, I, I was doing counseling on YouTube and, and, and the TikTok and the Facebook anyway. So it, even if you're watching online, uh, you, you don't have to. Here's what I found out. Our, our message is our mission. My mission is not to get people to come to this church. My, my message is to get the or my mission is to get the message of hope and help of Jesus Christ into their lives. Every single one of us can do it. So the next time you're, you're posting a, a picture of your food at, at a restaurant that you're eating at when you should be at home cooking and saving money, I'm just saying, you know, do feed your soul with the gospel of Jesus Christ as a subheader. There's a, a million ways, but if we will just become intentional. Now, there's some things here other mechanisms that we want to put in your hand. There's, there's no reason why you can't engage in some of these. If you just won't, that's a different issue. But I'm begging you, please consider downloading this and getting involved. It's encouraging to see other people reaching. I'd love to see us reach 100,000 people in the Fayetteville area through this app over the next year. I'd love to see it. There's no reason why we couldn't do that. 100 days of 1,000 people here reaching 100,000 people uh, commit to this. But one of the things that we offer is called a prayer point. A prayer point, and I'm going to read this for time's sake, prayer points take you where the people are. We started these because during COVID, we had people go out front and pray. As we would pray, we went to hospitals and prayed. We'd come out front and prayed. People would drive into the parking lot and just ask for prayer. So we did this. Prayer points take you where the people are. The key here is consistency. The most successful prayer points are those that occur on a regular time and location. You set it up, and those that need help will come. The training is done online. What does that mean? It means you're not going out looking for people, randomly harassing people who may or may not be interested. But what you're doing is you're setting up a point of hope in the community. You say, well, I can't. The training is comprehensive. It's online. It's super easy. Every location has one of these. You can reserve this. Come by. We'll train you on it. We'll give you the tent. It takes five minutes to set up. You say, well, I don't know how to do that. You can pray. The only thing you have to do is set it up and wait there's a QR code. People can submit prayer requests. A lot of them will drive by, won't even stop, but they'll submit a prayer request. Some of them will come up and simply ask for you to pray. We're not asking you to give away anything. We're not asking you to collect money. We're just asking you to consider being available, a point of reference in the community that will point people to Jesus. You say, well, I'm scared. I don't know how. Well, come do it. My wife and I will go do it with you. We'll, we'll set up down here at Walmart. 
And guys, this is how real and how simple that we want to make this. These tools are available. Part of our job, our calling is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. And this is one, what I consider, creative way of doing so. Um, talk to our, talk to him, Dan, about our community reach events. You know, we, we go out, I mean, just this last weekend, we sent one of these prayer tents out. We went to the fall festival in Rayford. Ooh. Hundreds and hundreds of people came by, some to get water, some to take a bag, others engaged in prayer. We had the opportunity to share the gospel, built a whole career around, around marketing and about one premise, go where people are. This is what community reach events are about. We go where people are, whether that is a community festival or whether that's into a neighborhood. You know, we have one that's on the schedule right now to go into Westgate community and simply be there, bring food trucks in because we know with food trucks, people will come. But the, I say we go where people are, and that's why we're talking to you because you go where people are in your everyday life. But having the opportunity to do that through a community reach event where we bring things to a community, not just, a, a, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Not just depressed communities, but communities where people need the gospel just as much as anyone. You know, where we get in there and we have the opportunity to engage one at a time, do things that are fun with them, show them that this Christ that we have in us gives us life. It doesn't call us to death. It calls us to life. Yeah, homelessness and poverty, people in those situations aren't the only ones that need help and hope. Right. You understand. So this is why we want to go into community. Even as a result of that thing that we did last weekend, there's some of you may be here today because of that, because you received one of the almost 1,000 bags that we hand out, handed out or somebody prayed with you or, or showed you uh, care and candor. And that's what we want. We want to care, but we also want to be very clear concerning the gospel. It's called direct evangelism. Um, so you can be a part of those. But there are other segments of our community that are really in dire straits when it comes to things. And we don't want to just offer people a, a hand out. We want to offer them a way out. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. We do want to meet the, the physical needs. And we have a homeless ministry. In fact, I'm gonna, there's several here. The way out is reaching the homeless community. We are currently working in the Cumberland County area. We'd like to expand this to the Moore County area through the, through the Aberdeen location and anywhere else that we can find the need. Um, but these events are held on the first Tuesday evening of the month and the second Saturday of each month. You can uh, away out at Rockfish church.com or clay Davis at Rockfish church.com or info at Rockfish church.com. Any of that, you just send something to Rockfish church.com. We'll get it and we'll respond. The first Tuesday event is a partnership with the Salvation Army. We, we decided that, you know what, we're not going to try to recreate the ministry wheel everywhere. If there's a church that we can partner with or the Salvation Army and they're doing it, we said, well, well, will you volunteer and just show up? You don't have to cook. The only thing you have to do is put on a pair of gloves, serve some people food, and be light and salt. As the Holy Spirit leads you, speak life and love into their lives. But, but it begins again. I want to go back to it. It begins with a commitment. Not just an acknowledgement of these opportunities, but real people taking real responsibility and filling real positions. The second Tuesday event allows teams to go into the camps to minister to the needs of the community. There are homeless camps around town. Um, some of them have been cleaned up and they've been moved and relocated by the city. There are others just on the outskirts of the city that are in dire needs. And, and it is a unique ministry. But you have the opportunity to really be the hands and feet hands and feet of Christ in those locations. Yeah, and you know, another opportunity we have, um, it, it's simply called Lunch With Us. Now, Lunch With Us is a partnership between us and a guy with a great big grill, and we simply go in and we take care of needs where the needs are at. You know, I mentioned depressed communities. We, this gives us the opportunity to go in and meet those people who have, you know, what we commonly refer to as food insecurities, people who um, maybe not aware of where the next meal will come from, but to get in there and to show some love by offering to meet a simple and basic need. And we, we do that with volunteers and we do that with the partnership that we have. And it doesn't take anything to be part of this other than to say, I'm willing, I'll yeah. go. Amen. Amen. This is one that 
it appeals to so many people, especially in this particular demographic here in the Fort Liberty area. Rockfish Church's Emergency Response Network is a team of Christ-centered volunteers trained and equipped to respond to all natural or man-made disasters. Guys, we live in a volatile world. Mm -hmm. We don't know what tomorrow holds. We know that there's powder keg about to explode in the Middle East, potentially. There's all kinds of crazy stuff that can happen at home or abroad. We need to be prepared. We've taken attention steps in preparation and the emergency response network is just that we work in conjunction with other churches who may be experiencing disaster to bring help and hope into those communities no matter what it is your skill set whatever you do it can be construction it can be electricity it can be hospitality it can be cooking there's something that you can do you say well pastor tony i don't have any of that do you have a chainsaw that's pretty practical. Do you have a hammer that you're willing to swing in the name of Jesus for the good of somebody else? I remember we went to Waverly, Tennessee, and this kind of sparked this. And, and you know, there was a lot of other organizations that had went through. A flood had come through and killed hundreds of people. It was devastating. It was like 18 inches of rain in like, like 45 minutes. It was some unbelievable disaster. Houses were floating down the middle of the street. It, it, was, it, was, it was bad. Weeks after when we arrived, there were still people walking around who were absolutely despondent. It was such a surreal time in their lives, and they needed help and hope. And sure, people were giving them food and, and working on stuff, but they needed somebody to share the gospel, to pray with them. I remember several people I just took aside and just prayed and counseled with them in, that, in, in the middle of that calamity. The Emergency spon uh, Response Network is something that we've designed to work here locally, to work nationally, and we're preparing to be able to utilize it in a capacity internationally, which is incredibly important, and I'm very excited about that as well. We've got a photo. It actually has its own website, uh, EARN, or Emergency Response Network, at rockfishchurch.com, I believe. ERnetwork.org. E -E -E -R -N -network org. Don't take my word for it. Was it on there? Yeah, there it is. ERN at rockfishchurch or ERNnetwork.org. Beautiful. Um, what about the what about this one, Dan? Tell us a little bit about this. This is exciting. This is exciting. You know, uh, just a few weeks ago, um, the, the pro life team was out and they were at the Planned Parenthood in Fayetteville, North Carolina. And right across the street is a pregnancy resource center, and they asked them to simply be open on Saturday, which is a day they're not normally open. And on that day, somebody was counseled by one of our sidewalk counselors in the, in the pro-life ministry, in the 40 Days for Life ministry, and they walked right across the street and they saw an ultrasound of their baby and completely changed their mind and saved that child. And these are the kind of things that we have the opportunity to, or to, to be a part of, to simply take part in praying for and praying with those people who are at a critical point in their life who may be about to make a decision they'll regret for all of their life. Amen. So yeah, this is an opportunity to get in the way of that. That next Saturday, the same exact thing happened. Two ladies who had taken the abortion pill met with our people who were there, who were physically there. When he says, offer your body a living sacrifice, a holy acceptable, it means put your body where God needs your body to be. Because they were there, two ladies who took the abortion pill went and were able to get abortion pill reversals. Both of those babies survived. One of them had a birth recently. Over 35 babies saved so far this year because of this ministry. Look, we can talk it or we can walk it. And I believe that our culture in this world, in this city, and the people that we love and care about, and even those we should love and care about, they need us to be real and to be really engaged. That's just one aspect. Um, there's something that I'm excited about, which is the International Reach Team. If you have a passport and you have a heart to reach the world, whether it's in the Philippines, um, the Philippines church is just it's jamming Pastor Jeff and Tanya. Tanya is here. So if you see Ta Tanya is... Is she in here? Anyway, uh, Tanya Hoagland, Pastor Jeff's wife, is kicking around here somewhere. If you see her, please love on her. She's gonna be, she had to come back and see the grandbabies. Pastor Jeff is coming back. He's going to be kicking off our December series here on the first weekend of December. So we're excited about that. But if you have a passport and you have a heart for the Philippines or for Ecuador or for Honduras or for Iraq or whatever, here's my fear. When God opens the door of opportunity, we need to be prepared to answer. 
We want to equip. We want to help. We want to send. Not just say, hey, be fed, be, you know, be blessed and go. But we want to be that mechanism of releasing the body of Christ in the areas of the world to make a huge difference. You say, well, I, I can't do that. Well, maybe you have some skill sets because of your job that could help with intelligence or with um, uh, technology to help do mission work in a way that some of these guys never thought possible. I met with a missionary from Iraq, we, or Iraq recently, and they are having to functionally or technologically do the same way that they were doing almost 20 years ago. I would love for us to be able to help them implement some of these technological advances because here's something that's amazing. I asked them this question. I said, I went to Honduras recently and they may live in a barrel, but they had a cell phone. He said, that is exactly the way it is in Iraq. I said, so what you're telling me is they have access to media and technology. He said, they do. I said, let's talk. Guys, we want to help. We want to help advance the kingdom of God around the world, and we want to invite you to be a part of that. Dan, closing thoughts? It's important that we get engaged. You know, I mentioned earlier that this, this whole series, this whole thought of Equipping Point is so circular. It's about developing the habits of becoming a better disciple. It's about developing the habits of being a better disciple maker. When these things become your routine, they, when, when they're no longer you needing to go to the app other than maybe to tally up all that you've done, this is where the difference begins to be made. Once again, we're going where people are. And for us, for me, you are where people are. Let's take this charge seriously. Let's be part of this disciple-making call that we all have been given. Maybe you're here today and you say, I need hope and I need help. I'm going to tell you, Jesus Christ offers hope and he offers help. And the catalyst to receive that help and hope is to receive what I'm about to tell you right now, which is why we exist. God so loved the world. That includes you and me. That, that motivation of love caused him to send his son to pay your penalty and my penalty. We have played stupid games and we have won stupid prizes. And it's wrecked our lives in a lot of different ways. Sin has impacted this world in detrimental ways. There's a penalty that must be paid. God said, I will pay your penalty through the person of Jesus Christ. If you will believe that, otherwise there's no other hope. There's no other way. Uh, if there were, I would tell you. If any other religion said, hey, this is the way, but they don't. Jesus was the only one that said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I am the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. No child is reunited with the Father except through the Son. That is the good news. That no matter how broken you are, no matter what you've done, in the person of Jesus Christ, God is pleased. Jesus opens his heart and his hands wide and says, come unto me. I will help you. I will heal you, and I will use you for the glory of God. That's a simple but powerful message. If you will believe that, then God, it says that you have the power to become sons and daughters of God. He said, believe, repent, be baptized, be filled with the Spirit of God, and receive the eternal life that he's already paid for every single one of us to receive. Guys, that's not complicated. Here's the problem. It's true. Those who hear and reject they're rejecting the only means of hope. Those who will hear and believe, they're introduced into a whole new life. It's as if, though, it's as if they were born again to a newness of life. Stand if you're able. I want to say thank you so much for, for being here today. If you want a decal, if you want a sign, they're out there, they're free. If you want to make a difference, there's no reason why you can't begin making a difference right now. Very often we try to make a point. I'm begging you. Quit worrying about making a point. Start making a difference by sharing the gospel and the love of Christ in your world, in your sphere of influence today. Amen. If you have any questions about any of these things, there'll be people up here to pray with you. If you need spiritual, emotional, mental, if you need help in any of those areas, there will be people up here to pray for you as well. Okay? Don't hesitate. Can I pray for us really quick? Father, set our hearts to fire for the things that you're passionate about. Set our hearts afire for people. God, forgive us for our complacency. Forgive us, Father God, for not prioritizing those things that you prioritize and help us, God, to reorder our lives intentionally in a way that will bring you honor and glory and will, will ultimately deliver people from death to that place of eternal life and connectivity with you. Help us, God, to be bold and intentional. 
Give us humble hearts, Father, that we would examine our lives intentionally and respond accordingly. God, we'll give you the praise and the honor and the glory right now for all of your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. See you Wednesday night.